Hello, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you, um, you may be. Thank you for joining us uh, to this webinar session. I'm Louis Alexandre Migosh. I'm the Product Marketing Manager of uh, Jetech Clearance. And uh, presenting with me today is uh, Nicolas Maté, our Customer Success Manager. Uh, welcome to our latest webinar, Improve Your Security Operations. Uh, we are here to talk to you about the camera reg registry module and how it's a complete solution to optimize your video request process and improve your security operations as a whole. So before we dive into this, let's look at the agenda. So I will start by going over what is Jetta Clearance and why we developed the app in the first place. Um, then we will look at the existing challenges of the video request process and what the module brings to the table to solve those issues uh, or challenges. Uh, then Nick will take us through the demo, talk about the different functionalities and features, and uh, he will follow that with uh, examples of different use cases and how this can expand beyond security and the potential uh, for different types of integrations. And we will end the webinar with a Q&A session. So please uh, don't hesitate to submit your questions uh, throughout the webinar in the appropriate section, which you can see here, the gray rectangle on the, the right-hand side of the GoToMeeting app. So I will start by explaining what led to the development of, of Janet Clearance and what it aims to solve. So we launched Clearance six years ago to address challenges that we noticed were affecting customers in their security operations, mostly with how to handle digital evidence. Obviously, Genetech is in the security space and a global leader in video management systems. And we witnessed one recurring issue, which is going from recorded video to using relevant footage in your security operations in one way or another. So video is at the forefront of security operations and it presents challenges uh, due to the sheer size of files and the quantity of different formats that come with, uh, with the media. And that's just one type of digital information that is part of of the equation of the investigation process. Obviously, we can think of multiple types of incidents where other stakeholders need to get involved. Um, for example, law enforcement or uh, your legal department. But the constraints of using video make it difficult to share documents electronically, which means that the process remains mostly analog, mostly manual. And that has made receiving and sharing information from, um, from colleagues and from partners difficult. Uh, you have your different departments, uh, people are using different technology, different policies and laws depending on location, et cetera. So all of these things create silos that make it difficult for, informa for information to, to transit. Uh, furthermore, data privacy has become a very important topic. And with additional legislation being adopted around the world, there is obviously a need to ensure tight controls over who gets access to sensitive data and how it is managed. So these are the trends that brought forward the development of Jetta Clearance. We want to allow users to manage digital evidence of all types efficiently and, re and responsibly coming from that focus on video. Um, Clearance is the Jetta product offering in terms of digital evidence management uh, systems or solution or DEMS for short. So let's look at how that translates in terms of the main use cases and features. First. Clearance is how you consolidate and manage all digital evidence in one place. So instead of using multiple different applications or partially covering parts of um, your um, investigation operations, uh, we aim to tackle the whole thing. We want users to be able to centrally store, request, and review digital evidence from multiple, often disparate sources. It's also about facilitating the sharing of relevant files within your organization, your departments, and with other stakeholders if that need arises. So for example, with law enforcement, as I've mentioned, it could be with, uh, with attorneys or members of the public. We want them to be able to offer an app that could tackle the aspect of individual privacy as well. So the app also features video redaction tools uh, to protect individual privacy, uh, for example, in the case of a subject access request. And Genetech and evidently clearance are all about ensuring the security and the auditability of your data. So that means that everything is encrypted and there is also an audit trail. And this ensures that evidence isn't tampered with and that it can be used uh, through the legal system. So this is a summary of what clearance does, but what about the existing challenges that organizations usually face in their video request process more specifically? You know, this is what the camera registry module tries to solve. 
So let's take a look at you know how these challenges usually present themselves and why the existing or traditional process is, is inefficient. So there are obviously multiple types of requests. Uh, it can be receiving data from different stores about theft or shrinkage, uh, sharing video with law enforcement about an incident that occurred close to one of your cameras or locations, or it could be, as I've mentioned, a request from, from a citizen. Whatever it may be, the main element is that it requires human intervention throughout the process, and a lot of it remains uh, manual to, to this day. So for many organizations, you still have um, paper forms to you know, approve and authorize requests uh, to, to, of sharing of evidence. So more than one person is part of uh, the communications may have to identify, request, review, and analyze video and other forms of digital evidence. Then if um, you are dealing with many different file formats, which may very well have happened, that means that you can end up with, with compatibility issues. So uh, you might have to find a proprietary software before the evidence can even be reviewed. Another crucial step is the handling of evidence and how it's transferred from one person to the next. So as I've mentioned, many organizations still rely on, on physical devices, DVDs, uh, USB keys. So someone must take the time to manipulate the data, save it on there, uh, then ship the physical evidence. And they, this makes it very difficult to ensure the chain of, of custody. So every manipulation, every step of the process involves um, labor costs. Uh, and the more steps and the more manual the process, the more times that it takes and, and you end up with a costly inefficient process. Plus, um, you have to take into account the cost of you know, shipping and the time of, to, uh, to receive the evidence uh, as it's not instantaneous. So if we go back to the initial vision of Genta clearance, and what I just mentioned is um, mostly relating to the inefficiencies of the process and how that can end up being costly. But we also want to address the issue of, of compliance um, and information security. So with clearance, we're really looking to strike a balance between the two points, efficiency and compliance. We want to automate the acceler and accelerate the process, but at the same time, we want to make sure that you have better governance of your data, that you ensure the privacy of the data that is being shared and that only the right people get to see it. And there's also something to be said about the current process that can easily be overlooked, but that can directly impact your, your bottom line. So using legacy systems and processes can expose you to unnecessary risks, such as losing evidence, evidence um, getting in the wrong hands, and not being able to uh, maintain chain of custody. And that's the reality of using you know, physical um, devices, objects to transfer sensitive data. So many jurisdictions are adding more prohibitive laws regarding the mishandling of personal data. Um, one example among many that we've we've heard of is uh, of a USB key uh, being lost by um, a main airport in uh, the United Kingdom. So that key contained a video that showed personal information with, you know, names, birth dates, uh, registration numbers, etc., of of, um, of employees, and then resulted in a pretty uh, hefty fine for the organization. So this you know, brings us back to what we aim to achieve with the camera registry from a conceptual point of view. So how do we actually orchestrate a whole request process from clearance? So at its core, the main challenge that we wanted to tackle was to make it easier to retrieve and review video from um, your security camera network. It's about being able to easily manage your own, uh, your own network, uh, whatever its size, how remote some devices may be, or the types of devices used. So we, we offer unification with Security Center with a plugin, which means that you can directly request and upload video between um, you know, the different stakeholders of the organization. Um, but we, we also want to um, make the collaboration between departments seamless and painless, uh, yet controlled. So policy-based workflows mean that the process is automated that it, and that it also rests on um, access control rules that give the appropriate clearance users the responsibility to accept or deny requests and uploads so that you are in control of the data at all times, um, but every step is done uh, quicker. 
And because all these requests are, are managed from the same platform, you have a full audit trail of who uh, and what has been requested, uploaded, reviewed, et cetera. And obviously, you know, going digital means that no more, uh, you don't have any uh, legacy systems and then processes that would require physical drives, um, which will reduce uh, the risk of, of uh, that I've mentioned uh, prior. So th there is no better way to really understand how it comes together than to see uh, how the camera registry works in app uh, in action. So Nick will now go over the demo to give you a better understanding of uh, of the different functionalities of the module. Nick, your turn. Thanks so much, Louis, and good morning and good afternoon, everybody. So we're going to jump into a demo of Clarence. And during this demo, I want to touch on three core use cases. First, we'll review how we can export video from Security Center to the cloud. Next, we'll take a look at how organizations can manage their request process and automate exports using Clarence. Finally, we'll look at how we can address requests from non-federated sites, as well as non-GenFX systems. So, Kicking things off, I'm going to show you how we can export video from Security Center to Clarence. For most organizations that are using Genetech today, when they need to share video, they will typically save it to the vault and export the clip <coughs> to be burned to a disk or put on a USB key. At that point, they'll either mail this to the recipient or deliver it in person. The process is generally very manual, delivery is an instant, and their ability to verify who has accessed the data is limited. So leveraging Clarence, we can improve this workflow. With the Clarence plugin and Security Center, operators can export video evidence directly to the cloud and share it through a case. So we'll take a look at this here. I've just opened up Security Desk, and I'm going to load up a camera and a monitoring task. And with the Clarence uh, plugin installed on this system, as an operator, I'll be able to right-click the tile. And you'll see that I now have an option to send evidence to Genetech Clarence. When I select this, it's going to open up an export builder, and here I can select uh, some cameras, and I can indicate the start and end times that I want for the export. On the next page, I'll have the option to send the evidence to an existing case in clearance, or create a new one, and that's what we're gonna do for this example. On the next page, I'll have to enter some basic information for the case. So I'll call this February 4th demo case, and I'll add some basic information. We'll assign a department. Think of this as like a predefined access template. We'll also be able to assign a category to our case, and they're customizable. And then we'll add a bit more information, such as an incident number and a record number, and maybe a description. When we're satisfied with the case information, we'll click Next and Finish. And the plugin is going to do two things. The first is it's going to create a case automatically in clearance. And then the second part is that it will export the video from the Security Center Archiver directly into the cloud, into the case that we've just created. So we're gonna jump into the Clarence web application here, and I'll just refresh my page. And you're gonna see that in my activities list, the case that we just created in Security Center has now populated in Clarence. We can open this up, and we'll see that all of the information that we had entered as an operator uh, with respect to the case information has populated. And we now have our evidence file that's uploaded. This is going to convert into a format that we can review directly in the application. So I'll give that a little bit of time and talk about some of the other things that we can do with the case really quickly. If we have some other relevant information that's related uh, to this case, so maybe we've got a couple of documents, we can drag and drop these uh, onto the file section so that we can contain this and package it up uh, with the video that we want to share. Now, once these files are consolidated inside of the case, uh, we actually have the ability to share this instantly with other parties. From the permission section on the right-hand side here, we have the ability to invite users. We can open up an existing users list and invite members of our organization. And we can also invite guest users if we want to share this content with an external stakeholder. Here, all I would have to do is plug in the email address of the user that I want to share this with and add their name. And then when I click invite, they'll appear on the users list. 
We can set a permission for them for this case, ranging from basic view only rights all the way up to manage. And for guest users, we can also define an expiration date to limit how long they'll have access to the content that we're sharing. If I wanna set this up for seven days, I can configure that. And now the uh, access will expire at that point. Once I click save, the recipient is going to get uh, an automatic email from Clarence with some credentials that will allow them to log into the system and access the content. Now, talking about that in particular, uh, we had uploaded our video file, moved it over from Security Desk, and one of the great features here inside of Clarence is that we're actually allowing uh, the users of the system to preview their evidence directly inside of the platform. So if I click on this video file, you'll see that I have the ability to start playing it back directly in my browser. What we're doing here is creating an MP4 copy of the video uh, that allows us to avoid having to install a standalone player or get any other software uh, loaded up on our workstation. Uh, ideally, we just open a web browser and we can immediately start to consume the content. It's a great little player. Uh, it'll pull the timestamp information in from Security Center. We have some tools like Digital Zoom and Frame by Frame. And really, this is just going to allow folks to uh, immediately access the content we want to share with them. Two other things quickly inside of the case. We are able to manage the retention policies for the files in here. This is actually tied to the category that's assigned to the case. So when we close the case, this will uh, kick in the associated retention policy. Once that time period expires, the files will be moved into the recycling bin. And this is how we can automate uh, the deletion of data and free up uh, storage space. The last thing I'll point out in the case before we move on is that all of the activity uh, from any of the users for uh, any of the files that are contained or for the case uh, as a whole are tracked in the system on a trails. So every action in clearance is tracked. And you can see that if we open this up here, we can see all of the details for the individual actions. We have the name of the user, the associated email address, timestamp, and IP address. So if we ever need to verify what level of access has uh, you know, uh, been taken advantage of, uh, or any of the changes that have been made to this particular case, we'll be able to do that. Now, as we started to better understand the workflows for video requests that a lot of organizations are using today, we were still seeing a lot of paper forms and the need for approval from different stakeholders before video could be released. We wanted customers already leveraging clearance to be able to manage video requests directly in the application and this is what led us to launch the camera registry module. I've just switched over to this and you're looking at the map view of this module. Now, taking a look at this module, it allows you to manage video requests. Since we first released it last year, we've provided options to facilitate requests from different sources of information. When we initially launched, uh, the integration to Security Center allowed you to plot different cameras from your video management system on the map and make requests for them. You can see here that if I click on one of the yellow camera nodes, this is representative of a camera in Security Center. We're able to see a little bit of metadata from this unit, and then we could submit a request. Since that time, though, we've also added the ability to enroll non-Genetech or non-federated systems inside of the account. Here, we're looking at these site nodes, and you'll see that if I click on one, I'll be able to see the site name, and I can click the View Details button to go in, look at the information about the site, such as the number of cameras and the days of storage available. And again, I can initiate a request if I want to. So there are a couple of different scenarios that we can address with these capabilities. And we'll start by looking at the security center integration. So in this example, we're providing video requesters with access to a self-service portal where they can browse through a list of cameras from security center and then initiate requests for video. Here, they don't have the ability to access live or playback video immediately, but can instead view metadata for the cameras of interest and then submit those requests. So you'll see here as an example, if I select one of the cameras in the list, we're only able to see a thumbnail field of view screenshot, a camera name, and maybe some location data. Now, if I want to request video, I'll click the request video button, and this is going to open up my request builder. The first thing that I'm going to need to do here is indicate the time range for the video that I'm interested in. So I'll just drop this down to a quick uh, two minute export. We can associate this with an existing case as well if we want to. So I'll jump to the next page. 
And what you're seeing here is a custom request form. So to qualify the requests that we're going to receive, organizations can create these custom forms uh, that will allow requesters to provide all of the information uh, that's required to justify the release of video. This effectively allows the organization to fold in any existing forms and have them completed electronically, as well as to track them through clearance. So I'll go ahead and I'll fill this out with some basic information. And then we'll submit the request. Now, once these requests are generated, they move into a request pool that authorized approvers can review. Here, the request can be evaluated and then approved or denied. So we'll open up this particular uh, request, and we can see here all of the information that was provided on the request form as the approver. We're also able to see the name of the requester, the time range that they're interested in, and the camera in uh, Genetech Security Center that's associated with their request. So at this point, we can decide to approve or deny this. I'm going to approve it. Now, what's interesting is that for these Security Center cameras, the video export process is actually automated. You'll see that a case was just created here. And now in the background, the video is being pulled from the Security Center archiver. And when that process is complete, it's going to be deposited into this case. So I'm going to let this run in the background. And we're going to jump into our next scenario. So I'll head back to the registry, and I'm going to get back to my map view, and we're going to look at one of the non-Genetech sites. So in our previous example, the video was coming from a connected Genetech Security Center system, but this may not always be the case. Some of your organizations might have locations that are not connected to the internet. Others might be using another VMS entirely besides Genetech. In these scenarios, instead of enrolling specific cameras, what we can do is enroll uh, the sites themselves in the registry. So the way that we're able to bring this information in is with a custom enrollment form uh, in clearance. To take that information in, we'll look for things such as the number of cameras, the days of storage, and location details. When we select a node from the registry, we'll be able to view the details for this site, so everything that was inputted for the location, and then we can again initiate a request. So I'll go ahead and open the request builder again. This time I'm going to assign a location for this request, and I'm going to associate this with uh, our existing case. So here I'll fill in the information again. And we'll submit this. Now, when we submit requests for video from these sites, the process is a little different. What's going to happen is that Clearance is going to send an automated email directly to the contact email that is associated with the site. So typically, this would be uh, you know, a shared uh, inbox for uh, the site managers. But in this example, I'm actually set up as the recipient for uh, this location. So I'm going to get an automated email from Clearance. And I'll open that up here and show you what it looks like. So the notification email will uh, let the recipient know that they're receiving this because they're part of a registry and there was an incident that occurred near uh, the site. It will show them the time range of interest for the request and it's going to provide uh, this individual with an upload link that they can use to share information from that location. So if we go ahead and click on that upload link, this is going to take us to a page where we'll be asked to identify ourselves. So I'll put in some basic information and accept some terms that are defined by the organization. And then on the next page, we're going to be able to share information uh, into the case that's associated with the request. So if we were looking at some video from one of these uh, sites that isn't federated or from a non-security center site, uh, we would be able to pull the video from the archiver manually. And then once we have it on our workstation or our laptop, we can access the link to share it into Clarence. So I'll just take a small clip here and deposit that onto the upload link. It's going to initiate the upload process. And what we'll be able to do at this point when it completes is go back into Clarence. We'll open up our existing uh, demo case. 
And you're going to see that inside of the case, we now have the new file that was just shared a minute ago. And we can click on this to open it up and immediately start consuming the evidence from that location. So that's how we can manage the requests from the non-Genetech uh, or non-federated locations. Now, I'm just gonna jump back to the original request uh, that we had created here. And oh, what I wanted to show is that in our original example, where we were requesting video from a security center camera, this has actually uh, completed the automatic export. So the video has been deposited onto the request and moved into the case. So if I open up the case view, you'll see that the file is contained in here. We can click on it, open up the video, play that back. And as the approver, I can review this video to make sure that it's acceptable to release. If I need to add any additional information, I can do that. And then once I'm satisfied with the content, I can complete the review. The last thing that I wanted to point out here quickly is that we always have the ability to also generate a file request link uh, for an open request. You can see that we have the add files button here. I can click on this to generate one of those share links. So if there's a need to retrieve video uh, from a location uh, that uh, isn't connected, or maybe we're looking at a scenario where we're trying to get video from a train car or a bus that doesn't have a fixed location, we can use this link uh, to facilitate the retrieval of video for the associated request. All right, so, now that we've taken a basic look at the registry from a high level, let's take a look at how it can be applied in practice. In the first example, we're gonna look at a large transit authority on the West Coast that is managing transportation services for a major metropolitan city. In terms of the current infrastructure, each station has a surveillance system federated back to a head end but what's important to note is that there are also mobile recording systems on all of the buses and trains that are not connected to the internet or the WAN. Looking at the challenges this customer was facing, their security and investigations department was really struggling to track all of the different requests they were receiving. They had requests related to passenger incidents or complaints, requests for video related to service operations and accidents, as well as those that were coming from outside agencies like law enforcement. All these video requests required the completion of a form and tracking the progress and outcomes for each request was challenging. Another issue was the actual collection of the video from the onboard systems. In this case, uh, the video was being recovered by technicians in the field with the use of hard drives that were then shipped back to HQ. So to address these issues, the customer decided to move forward with clearance and specifically implementing the camera registry. Let's take a look at some of the outcomes. Firstly, clearance helped them standardize their request management process with a single customized intake form to support all request types. With all of the requests flowing into a centralized platform, the team was able to improve their tracking and processing rates dramatically. Another outcome was the streamlining of video retrieval from their onboard systems. Using the request functionality of the registry, a request form can be submitted for video from a specific train car or bus. If approved, the evidence team was able to share the associated file request link with the retrieval technicians. Leveraging this tool, video from their onboard systems is now uploaded directly to clearance from a technician's laptop after retrieval and hard drives aren't being shipped anymore, uh, so they've been able to eliminate uh, that physical um, transport tool. Now, in our second example, we have a multi-site retailer with over 2,000 locations across the United States and Canada. Today, their video surveillance infrastructure is a mix of Genetech and other vendors. For this customer, the primary challenge was the number of incidents where video was being requested each day and it was simply overwhelming the corporate security team, with the majority of these requests coming from the loss prevention department. A secondary issue was the process for collecting video from the non-Genetech sites was very manual. The details such as the number of cameras at a site and their retention periods were not always easily available to the uh, security staff, and especially in situations where the team was working with a franchise location. 
So taking a look at the outcomes, implementing uh, clearance and the video request functionality really help corporate security save a lot of time uh, when responding to requests. So the core stakeholder group, loss prevention, now submit all their requests through the registry. Leveraging a custom request form, all of the request details are now provided up front to the approvers, and this has eliminated a lot of unnecessary back and forth between parties. For the Genetech Security Center cameras, the video retrieval is automatic once approved, and the delivery is instant. What's also important to note is that the stakeholders can review evidence directly in the app without additional software or support. This has helped them reduce the time it takes to fulfill a request by over 50%. Taking this a bit further, the customer was also able to standardize the request process for all their sites, regardless of the infrastructure. The non-Genetech locations were created as sites in the registry to help track system information and automate most of the request process. When a request for video from one of these sites is created, a notification email with an upload link is automatically generated and sent to the site managers, allowing them to upload evidence to the associated case. So you can see in both of these examples, the camera registry and clearance were really able to provide a lot of value. Now, in both of these examples, we focused primarily on the stakeholders in corporate security and how implementing clearance really helped improve their processes and operations for the better. As security professionals, when we talk about video surveillance, we tend to focus on the security applications and scenarios. Most of the time, it is corporate security and facilities that manage these systems, so this is totally normal. But what's important to recognize, however, is that investigations occur across many departments inside of an organization, and video can also be a very useful tool for these stakeholders. If we look at the manufacturing industry as an example, issues with an automated processing line would be a scenario where video could be very valuable. For the production managers who might not have been immediately present at the point of failure, being able to review the footage of the event would help with the root cause analysis. Here, we're not looking at a security scenario. There wasn't a break in or a threat necessarily, but the video is still providing a lot of operational value to another department. Taking this a bit further, if there was a serious accident, legal might need to get involved and by leveraging a tool like Clarence, we can streamline their access to the video as well. The challenge traditionally has been making the video accessible to other stakeholders without creating too much work for corporate security or giving too many people access to the recording system. With Clarence and the camera registry specifically, we're able to overcome these challenges and make video accessible without the traditional risks that are associated. Through implementing technologies like clearance, organizations can start to leverage their existing video surveillance system in new ways and ultimately increase the return on investment that they're getting from their existing surveillance infrastructure. Now, as you grow outside of corporate security and increase uh, the total number of people asking for video, so in our examples, the folks from legal and manufacturing, there need to be tight controls for how user access is managed and that's where we can provide integrations to your existing identity management system. Clearance is able to integrate with Azure Active Directory as well as OpenID Connect compatible uh, identity management platforms, but this is really just the beginning of what we can do in terms of integrations. When we look at the whole organization, different departments will be using separate tools, and this is where it becomes interesting to leverage APIs to interface with clearance and make the experience easier for all of the stakeholders. Taking a look at some of the examples, today we already looked at the Genetech Clearance plugin for Security Center uh, that allows our operators to be able to send video directly to clearance instead of having to manually export it and uh, move it into the digital evidence system in a more time-consuming manner. Another example of uh, integrations would be uh, those to existing case or incident management softwares. A really good example here uh, is we'll see that a lot of loss prevention departments typically have a, a case uh, system or an incident system. And here we're able to do things like build integrations where information can be pushed from one system to another, links can be returned from clearance so that the use of both platforms is seamless and they really complement one another. The last example I want to mention is uh, looking at integrating third-party devices. So here, uh, 
A great example and something that we're seeing a lot more of is integrations to body wearable cameras, where once they're docked, the recordings can be automatically offloaded to clearance and then assigned to cases by the appropriate stakeholders. We're starting to see the use of these devices become a lot more common in verticals like transit, uh, retail, and even education. One thing that I want to point out as well is that in Clarence, all of our features are actually designed API first, and they're built for easy integration. We have a public developer hub, and I'm just going to open this up here. Uh, so anybody can uh, access this. It's totally public today. We list all of our APIs here, and we also provide a sample code that uh, can help developers uh, get started. We typically get a lot of really good feedback uh, about the information that we have here. Uh, and we're always happy to jump in and work with uh, development teams to help them uh, build out integrations and consult on that front. So to bring things back to one of the earlier slides, implementing clearance and the camera registry can help an organization strike a balance in how they manage digital evidence. On the point of speed, customers can facilitate access to recordings for other stakeholders without creating more work for corporate security. With respect to governance, organizations can ensure the approval process for video requests is followed, while also maintaining tight controls of evidence and sharing only what's needed. Lastly, we can automate retention policies for evidence and simplify the delivery process for video to improve operational efficiency. So with that said, I'm gonna pass things back to Louis and he'll talk to you a little bit about how you can start a trial of Genetech Clarence. Thank you, Nick. Uh, that that was great. So um, now that you've seen what you can achieve with the camera registry module, uh, you might want to actually try it. So good news, it's possible for those for anyone interested to start a 45-day free trial of, of Genetech clearance with the camera registry module enabled. Uh, please note, however, that a training session is required before receiving access to the account. Uh, that is obviously something that we will be more than happy to help you with. Um, so if, um, if you're interested, uh, please reach out to us if that's the case, if you want to start a, a trial, if, or if you have any questions or comments about um, the application or the module itself. You can send all inquiries by email to clearanceteam at genetech.com. So this concludes uh, the, main, uh, you know, the main part of the webinar. We will now, now start the Q&A session in a short moment, so I would just like to thank everyone uh, for attending today. Uh, please note that the recording of the webinar will be sent to you in a follow-up email. So if you have to go, um, thank you for, for being here. So we will start to go over um, some of the questions now. So we just got um, a great question about whether or not there's a, a neighborhood watch type feature uh, in clearance. So uh, just to kind of speak to that really quickly, I'll open the application back up. So when we were taking a look at the camera registry and specifically focusing on the, uh, the locations uh, that were not uh, coming from a Genetech system, that were coming from other platforms, uh, that's where we have the ability to list really any site uh, inside of Clarence. So talking about it in our example today, we were looking at you know, locations like uh, uh, station platforms uh, or uh, sites for businesses but you could also enroll really any location if you wanted to uh, into the registry and then be able to track that in your system. So there was another question about the Genetech plugin um, and just to clarify how that works. So it gives operators and security desk the ability to export video directly to clearance. So we're removing the process for them having to uh, vault it and then manually upload something to the cloud. And then with respect to the requests, uh, we're able to manage that process through clearance. Uh, and when approval is granted, the video is pulled automatically from security desk. What can be configured is we can have notifications in Security Desk that are sent to operators uh, when a request is created. And that can be the indication to them that they need to log into the evidence platform and go into the, uh, the requests section to approve the request. So 
We had a, another good question about um, sending QR codes and links to the public to ask for evidence. So we touched on that quickly at the end of one of the examples, but I'll just open um, a case back up here to address that. So inside of any case that we have in the system, what we're able to do here is uh, submit a, or create what we call a file request. So this allows us to generate a shareable link that we can send out to anybody and we can configure this with uh, an expiration date. So this is the same type of link you saw when we were looking at how the uh, enrolled sites are able to share their video into the system in response to a request, but this could in theory be sent to anybody. So if we're looking at uh, some of the scenarios we talked about today, if we're looking at uh, you know, the multi-site retailer and they have a, an issue that they encounter, uh, you know, maybe a, a customer has a bad experience or they see something uh, that they record with a cell phone and they wanna share it with the organization, the link could be sent to them and then they could use this to upload video from their cell phone. We're also generating a QR code with every link uh, and you can scan this with your mobile device to be able to uh, access the link and share information. So if you wanted to set up uh, a printout of the QR code in say a security office and when you have an issue, you can bring folks in uh, to scan that uh, and easily submit evidence, that's also something that could be leveraged. So we had another good question here from the audience about how uh, data gets deleted from the system. So I just wanna reiterate how that works inside of the case. So when cases are created, one of the things that we can do is assign a category type. And while the category type's primary function is being able to identify the type of incident, a secondary function is that it uh, relates to a retention policy. So I'm just gonna open the configuration section of Clarence really quickly to explain this. We won't dive too deep into the, uh, the guts of the product, but you'll see that in our retention policy section, we're able to configure retention policies in either days or years, or to simply never delete. So the way that this will work is that when we're in our case, if it's in an open state, we hold the information indefinitely. We assume that this is an ongoing investigation and there's no need uh, to have a retention period on that information. Now. When the case is closed, and this is a, an action that's taken manually by a user that has a manage privilege, what the system is going to do is check the associated uh, retention policy that is assigned to the category. Uh, at that point, the retention period will come into play, and when that period elapses, the files will move from um, the case into the recycling bin, and then after another short period of time, they'll be deleted automatically from the system. So another uh, question that we've got here is, can you submit video requests if you don't know exactly what you're looking for? And that's a really great question. So in the two examples that we looked at in the demo, uh, we looked at submitting a request from a site and submitting a request from a security center camera. Uh, something really interesting though, is that you can actually submit a request without associating a site or a camera. So a really good example would be if we were trying to request video from a specific bus uh, inside of a transit authority. So what we could do is submit a request and just indicate the time range that we're interested in and the location, and you'll see that we actually have not uh, selected a camera here. Using the request form on the next page, we can provide all of the uh, details that uh, we need to so in this case, we could indicate, for example, the bus number that we're looking to receive video from, we could provide a description. And this is really the power of being able to customize these forms uh, to exactly the needs of your organization. You can set them up so they're able to handle a lot of different request types, even if the requester isn't 100% sure uh, which cameras they need uh, video from. We have another question uh, about the ability to playback video from non-Genetech systems. So this is a great question. Uh, I'm just gonna open up the help guide here to respond to this one. Uh, so inside of Clarence, we're able to work with a lot of different file types. So 
we looked at video coming from uh, Genetech Security Center and we're obviously able to work with uh, our own proprietary formats, uh, but we actually have an extended video format library option for clearance. So when this is added on to a subscription, this brings the, uh, the total support for different video codecs up to about 100 different formats. And the real benefit here is that you know, regardless of whether your video is coming from Genetech or another VMS, or maybe it's coming from uh, a mix of, of different uh, recording applications, you will be able to play back the vast majority of video uh, directly in Clarence. I'll take this um, one last question, probably. So how does the audit trail actually work? So the audit trail is based on uh, blockchain design philosophy. So it's like a ledger of every action taken in app and um, all the entries are, are logged automatically and cannot be altered in, in any way. Um, so that's why you can rely on the information that's, um, um, that's on there. Seems like that's basically it for the questions. So again, I would like to thank everyone for, uh, for attending uh, this uh, webinar session and um, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.